Hey guys, episode 9 of the other time-lapse expert tips already. Welcome back. And today I'm going to continue with the sequence that we started last time, where I showed you on how to remove lens condensation to a certain extent. Today I'm going to show you how to correct a tilting horizon that has been caused by a motion control pan head not really set up level. This is a sequence. And as you can see, at the beginning, the horizon is already a little bit tilted, but at the end, it gets even worse. Of course, the approach would be to keyframe the crop of the images, but there are a couple of things to consider. First of all, normally, if you set different crops to different keyframes, we already have one, two, three, four, five keyframes here. So if you would set one crop here and a different crop here and another crop here, you would notice that LR timelapse will only animate from the first to the last keyframe in a linear way. That's of course because normally you would have way more keyframes for animating color adjustments and so on than for the crop animation. You would never be able to get a steady artificial camera movement if you were forced to edit the crop differently on every of those five keyframes. That's why by default, Alert Timelapse only animates the crop from the very first keyframe to the very last keyframe. But there is also an option to animate the crop individually from the normal keyframes. Basically, there is a second layer of keyframes that you can use only to animate the crop. And you get that keyframe by selecting the row in the table and pressing the key 5. And the icon changes to a square here. You can also see that here in the preview. So now we need to know where we would like to edit the crop differently. So here we have the same angle, I think. And we can set a second keyframe here again by pressing 5 and then a third keyframe at the very end again by pressing 5. So now we save this and go back to Lightroom. And I select the whole sequence in grid view, metadata, read metadata from files. And now I can filter for LRT5 keyframes crop. Everything else has already been edited that was in the last episode. So now we are only dealing with the crop on that second layer of keyframes, which will not affect the first layer of the regular four star keyframes. So now we have those three keyframes here that we are going to use for our can burns. Now it's important that we start editing the crop on the keyframe where we do the biggest adjustment in crop. And I think that will be the third keyframe here because the tilt is the strongest here. And now I will use my crop tool. I will already set this to 16 to 9 and I will fix the horizon. When setting this crop, I always like to leave a little bit space here to the edges because what happens if you just do a rotation and extend the rotation, Lightroom automatically will shrink the crop and add kind of a zoom. So we would like to avoid that so that the crop size stays the same for the whole animation. That's also why I started with the last one where the rotation is the strongest. Now to bring the crop to the keyframe before, we need to use the native sync in Lightroom, but make sure to check none and use only the crop as you learned it on my expert tip number five, I guess. And now let's bring it to the first. Now we can adjust the rotation a little bit. And here also. And all of those crops have the same size. That's the only reason why I started from the end, because I just wanted to avoid Lightroom to scaling the crop. Additionally, now, of course, we could also try to bring the horizon to the same position. And in order to be able to see that a little bit better, I will change my overlay by hitting O here in the crop tool until I have this small grid. There you can also see a little bit better on how to do the rotation. Now we're on the seventh small square here with our horizon and let's 
go to the second keyframe and also bring this to the seventh square and on the fourth keyframe also. Now the horizon is at the same position in all three keyframes. I'm going to save my metadata and now go back to other time lapse, do the usual reload, auto transition and wait for the visual previews to complete. Let's have a look at the curves. The only default curve here, which shows you the exposure, it will show you both types of keyframes, the five star ones and the four star regular ones. But as soon as you switch to another setting here, for example, the crop from the top, so this setting, you will see that the crop only applies to the five star keyframes here. And this is the shifting that we did in the very last editing stage where we just uh, brought the horizon to the same position. If we choose crop angle, for example, you can see that we have the animation of the crop angle via those three keyframes. If we choose another setting here, for example, the local exposure on the second circular gradient, those are applied to the four star keyframes here and not to the five star keyframes that are only being used for the crop. And altogether, those are the curves with the crop edits here where you can see them applied to the five star keyframe slayer and the other keyframes applied to the other settings. Okay, let's play this back. As you can see now, we have a straight horizon, which is not tilting anymore. It stays on the same position and the sequence looks much better now than before. And we accomplished all of this with the native tools in LR Timelapse and Lightroom, where LR Timelapse provides the ability to animate the crop on a second special layer of keyframes, which gives you a lot of flexibility. On the other hand, I would only recommend to doing rather slow animations with this technique because Lightroom always cuts the image to full pixels. A sub-pixel animation like most of the video editors can do is not possible in Lightroom. That's why for heavier can burn style animations like we call this kind of virtual camera movements, I'd always recommend to export and render in full size without doing that crop animation and then animating in a video editor. But for tasks like this here, it's perfect to do it right when editing the keyframes in Lightroom and Alert Timelapse. I hope again you learned something in this expert tips. Give me a thumbs up if you like it, leave a comment and then I see you next time the next expert tip. Bye bye!